guys and welcome to Strawberry Patches episode number 16. Today I'm coming to you from Matakana which is a tiny little town north of the northern island of New Zealand, north from Auckland and it's a tiny little town and today is Saturday and it's a market day, farmer's market and I've just seen some really cute little um, veggies and manuka honey which is really expensive and really good for you and it's rare uh, I've seen also some nice pottery and right now I'm going to see some waterfalls which is just up this well up or I don't know down this tiny little river with some ducks Let's I forgot see. to introduce myself my name is Marina and I'm a crafter knitter doll maker and traveler, welcome to my podcast. Here we are, I found the waterfalls. In this episode, we're going to talk about this little village and my life in New Zealand. Also, um, I wanna show you some of the things that I've finished and I'm knitting on and I got a sewing machine. So I wanna share news about that as well. So thank you for joining me and hope you like this episode. Life update. I've been here for four months now, from February till June, that's five months already, yeah. And I can say that New Zealand is not what I expected, but I didn't expect much because I didn't know anything. What I did find out is that this is the perfect place to give birth and raise your children because there are the community, there are many communities and they're very, very helpful to each other and there's lots of free classes for mothers for language learners for different religions and different um, ethnic communities like the Chinese and the others and there are many many people who would love to help you I found a very nice midwife that is taking care of me and I'm out of breath because I just climbed from there from the waterfalls at home and it's the first time that we went out of the city into this little village and I got to see all this greenery which New Zealand is a green country like everywhere you look there's lots of trees grass and because of the constant rain and humidity it's very green very lovely perfect for kids so I'm very happy to be here so the market is finishing, it's about 1 o'clock, beautiful weather, 18 degrees, that's winter in New Zealand, huh? And I just wanted to show you what I bought. I got this wonderful manuka honey, very cheap for what it is, it's pure virgin honey, product of New Zealand, and I talked to the guy who produces them, he said he has about 300 hives, and he has been traveling for 25 years from Switzerland where he has his other hives and when it's when the bees sleep he comes here so when the bees sleep here he goes back to Switzerland and he has all the certificates of authenticity and all that and I tried his honey it's super nice turns out Manuka honey is a really exclusive honey and it's not just for eating like with your tea or anything it's like medicine so you have to have one spoon keep it in your mouth dissolve it and then all of the nice properties of it like heal your throat if you have a sore throat or something he says that even if you put a tiny little bit of it <clears throat> on your wound and then <clears throat> cover it with a plaster or with um anything or well, whatever then it will even heal it so yeah that was the honey i also got some chocolates which are so cute the whitaker milky chocolate tweets and the best thing is that these tiny milk chocolates they pop in your mouth and there is a picture of tiny little bird on the chocolate itself I also treated myself to my favorite flower and this is this beauty it's a phalaenopsis and I had so many of them if you remember from my first episodes back in Istanbul and I'm just starting my collection here this is number two 
Also, a very nice man told me that he has been doing it for quite a few years and he had the most amazing collection of them. So that's my day here in Matakana. Beautiful winter. What is it today? 16th of June. Beautiful Saturday. As you have seen, I've had a very nice weekend, which was last weekend. Today is the 24th of June, and this is the day I'm recording this 16th episode. I'm very excited. I already told you what it's going to be about, but I'm going to include also information about possums, because one of you asked me to research about it. I will also show you, of course, my whips and finished objects, and also I will tell you about some knitting groups that I've recently found. So let's get on to it. Yeah, first of all, welcome. Very happy to be seeing you, well, kind of seeing you again. And uh, I've been watching some new ep podcasters recently and I wanted to share them with you as well because it's always nice to see, for me, your, the feedback that I get is through your comments and through videos of other podcasters which are like me just sitting in front of the camera but somehow it becomes interactive it's like you are actually talking to someone so one of the first people I wanted to share love with two or what do you say uh, it's Libby and she is a New Zealander knitter uh, she has a very nice podcast, Truly Merle. I'll put the link right now. And I've watched all of her episodes that are there. And uh, I contacted her. She's a very, very nice woman. And she has, she's knitted so much and sewn so much. She basically, whatever she's wearing is hand sewn or hand knitted. And there's many patterns that she's got. So next Thursday, she said she'll be in one of the new cafes that has been opened here in Auckland, which is called Stitch and Bitch. And I'm going to see her. How exciting is that? So Libby uh, will be there and I'll meet her. Um, if you haven't heard or haven't seen her, just go and check it out. You'll love it. Another new podcaster that I've loved was um, Emily from The Little Blue Mouse. She's also one of those nice, happy people that you enjoy watching. If you are knitting or drinking tea or you just want to relax with your knitting while your hands are busy doing something, you can also pop in and give her some love. Um, that's all for podcasting. Another thing I wanted to talk about... Um, which I didn't plan in the beginning, but now I want to talk about it, is that in Auckland, it took me a while to find out some knitting groups. Well, the first one I found was really by accident. It was the first wool shop that I found, the one that I keep talking about, the New Zealand fabrics and yarns on in Queen's Arcade, in the center of Auckland. And that's the one I've been going to, like a good student every week, sometimes twice a week. I've been curious about other knitting groups around here and I've done some research and this week I have been to the one in the George Presbyterian Church in Takapuna which is a lovely circle of ladies like age like my grandmother and more who are sharing their love for knitting and just talking about actually it's been interesting because Everybody got, I got a chance to talk to a few of them and they've been talking to me about how it used to be in New Zealand, the history of knitting and knitting groups and all these church groups. And it wasn't as religious as I was fearing it would be because I normally don't go to church. I just want to chat about knitting, about New Zealand because I'm new here. I want to learn a bit more 
about their lifestyle and they were very welcoming and um, it was very nice. Another group that I have just come back from is the Glenfield Library Knitting Group, which are working on a new project, which they're making beanies for the premature babies. Actually, I've noticed that the many uh, other knitting groups are doing that. And I didn't know what to expect, but I was thinking it would be more like just, you know, chat, have a tea and knit on whatever you bring along. But turns out they are actually purposefully coming there to make some things that they would donate to the hospital. Because apparently hospitals here are in need of this tiny garments for babies because not all of the mothers have the money or are prepared enough and they don't have the proper clothes for their babies. So I joined those ladies and I have started a hat and the thing is I was very curious to try out this pattern so I just followed the pattern and I made in about one and a half hour this much for a beanie hat. Well normally I don't use the long straight needles like this, especially for a hat I'd prefer to use four or five needles or circular ones because you know the like stitching it up later is a pain and then it's so much easier when you cast off and it's done. So because I didn't take any with me and I had no idea what was going on, I had to borrow their yarn, which is 100% acrylic. Another thing, do you think, we were discussing this there and the lady said that because these beanies go to families which would probably like not wash them very often, but they, when they would, they would just throw them in the machine and in the dryer and it would be such a shame something handmade would be felted. So they were saying that they, that's why they prefer to use acrylic yarn also because it's $2 per ball as you know the um the woolen yarn the wool yarn is much more expensive if it's merino and if it's something that you want to use for a baby but i know other ladies who are donating and making and donating beanies for babies they say no 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 i want my, the baby whoever baby that's gonna wear to have all the natural fibers and everything so here's a question for you what do you think is best for babies because I don't mind making both for my baby. I was just wondering what is more, and I, of course I don't mind washing with, with my hands and everything. And there's been lots of discussion about super wash. Is it nice or not? Is it uh, environmentally friendly or not? So in that respect, any of you who have babies, whose maybe children have babies, what would you, use what kind of yarn do you think is a smarter choice and you can comment below that would be very nice um so it was very nice to meet those ladies as well and they have a very good purpose to just donate a couple of hours of their week for this good course but i i don't know maybe i'm being selfish but i after i finish this beanie i will go and give it back with the needles and yarn but I would prefer really to spend some time on making something for my baby because right now my baby only has one hand knitted hat and that's it. And I know I have still some time, but I really would prefer working on something for my own baby. It's very nice though to, you know, know that Auckland is, has lots of these people and communities as I was saying, of people who try to help each other and those in need, especially, you know, hospitals and mothers, which one of them I'm going to be soon. Uh, I was knitting on it and I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if I donated to a hospital and then by chance, by coincidence, I would end up, my baby would end up getting me. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> but anyway, I just thought that I can invest a couple of hours of my time into this and hope that some um, some mother would be happy to have her baby wear it. So yeah, now 
let's move on to the finished objects. And for this week, I have only one. And I'll tell you why. These are the socks. Um, I'm not sure, one or two episodes ago, I showed you the yarn that I got from Cindy, which is a local indie dyer. And this is 100% superwash wool in DK weight. It was such a fun color that I couldn't stop. I cast it on and I was done in like two or three days. And uh, I did some contrast in heel because I was afraid it wouldn't be enough, but I still have some left of that yarn. I was gonna show it, but I have no idea where it is. Oh, it's in there. Anyways, um, I think even though they pulled a little bit, the speckles, they were so much fun to knit and um, this is my easy to go pattern like I know it by heart because I made so many socks this is how my grandma taught me so it's a heel like a flap and then I just pick up stitches here and then vanilla sock and then I use five so five uh, double pointed needles and then I just when I try it on and it's reaching my toes my, it's covering my littlest toe then I start decreasing and that's it and it was such a quick knit for me and I was like wow if all the yarn was so chunky and because it's a DK it was so much easier than the other socks that I've done before the autumn ones but well the other good thing about those are is that they're thinner and I can wear them in the shoes and I think the colors also show a little bit better, but I have still some of my hand dyed yarn for that, for those projects for when I um, make more socks. So the reason is, the reason why I have only one finished object is because I decided not to cast on any new things. Well, <laughs> I decided and then I did this. But yeah, I thought that I have so many things going on that it's better to work on them and finish them finally because otherwise I'll just end up with a bunch of projects ongoing ongoing and going and going it just makes me stress that's why I've been working mostly on my week weekday uh, weekday scarf which is made from this gorgeous merino and um, possum uh, yarn and I have come to the point in the pattern where it's marked as a middle. It starts off like because it's a scarf and I wanted to wear it with my long cardigan, which is open here and I wanted just to cover my neck. This is what I wanted. I wanted something really long, but still with a little bit of um, shape and uh, some kind of design. So this is how it goes. Every row you decrease four, you know, you, you bind off four and then you increase five. And that's how it goes, 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 goes. From 11 stitches until 56. And by the way, this is a lovely stitch marker from Anna from Dunkelgrün. And here I came to the point when I'm supposed to decrease and obviously it's gonna narrow down. But I'm really, really thinking that maybe I should measure because I think this is still more than half left. And I really want to use up all of this yarn because if it's not in this shawl, then I don't see much where I can use it. So if I ever come across any sensitive scales, actually, I have a friend who has them. So my, my idea is to weigh the yarn and if this is... A lot more than 50 gram then I would go back and like increase a couple of rows more until I start to decreasing but yeah after I block it it would probably open up better and show off this nice kind of lacy detail on the side another thing that I've been working finishing hopefully <laughs> is living in this handmade bag that I've done is that never ending blanket, which I called the Bali um, Spicy Life um, blanket. 
This is a pattern by Sandra Cherry Hart, I think, because it's her podcast. And I, this is the second one I'm doing. And I wanted to show you that I've been so, so, so good. Last time I showed it to you, I was... Here we are. I was here. Where are these little birdies? And I've done this many rows. And I think it's pretty good progress considering that before before then see this is where it is this is how much i've done the other let me see now you can see it so the other one that i've done was half the size of this and by now this is part five and the part six is already the edges so i would have been finished by now this is like two blankets but i wanted it longer and i bought plenty of more yarn which is finishing so the plan is to go as long as the yarn allows me and then have a white border and this will be my own um, baby blanket the one that hopefully my baby will be using a lot this summer the summer here will start in November and this is around the time that I'm due so I'm hoping that this is a perfect um, uh, by the way, this yarn is bamboo and cotton blend from Indonesia that I got in Bali and I started there. And I thought that this would be perfect because it's hypoallergenic and it's um, breathable. And basically it's very good for skin. And I'm hoping that it's going to be a sturdy piece that would be washed and wouldn't hopefully lose its colors. We still have to discover that. So as you can see, I've been working on these two projects most of the time. I haven't done any toy making, but I have been spinning. And first of all, I show I want to show you how much spinning I've done on that um, yarn that I hand dyed. This you've already seen. But plus to that, I've done <laughs> this much. And I put them together and I compared like the first experiment at spinning then there you go still not very even but then i get better still lots of um how can i say not very evenly spun yarn and some of it is really thin i still have to figure out how to do it but i'm quite liking it and i think it will be a fun project especially because it will be my first of this kind but I also I couldn't help it I had to start spinning on that wool that I showed you that I got the fleece that I got from the wool fest which is this candy floss this baby colors unicorn as somebody called it and this is what we got I like the way um, white kind of marls or twists with other colors and I'm really really happy with the result I started to spin thinner unintentionally but then I thought okay let's continue like that because once you get a certain thickness of yarn and you spin like we don't have a big um, space I mean time between you spin then it's kind of the same how can I say thickness of yarn and if I'm planning to make it into one single single object then it would be better so yeah as you can see there's quite a difference or is it what do you think <laughs> I don't know I think this it's become much better also because this was uncombed wool which we dyed and then of course washed and then I um, carded it which was my first experience at carding and look at this feather-like cloud it's pre-carded it's absolute pleasure to work with that's why it's so much easier to get this even texture 
But enough about that. We have other things to talk about. Uh, have I been doing anything else? I think that's it. Mainly I've been good with this, this object. The next thing I wanted to talk about is my stash acquisition. Well, yarn acquisition. Let's not call it stash. <laughs> I plan to use it, although I've told myself I'm not gonna buy anymore, I'm not gonna buy anymore, I'm not gonna buy anymore, there I go. I went for some thread for the sewing machine because I've set it up, but I found out that I don't have enough and the color that I need. By the way, in the very beginning you might have seen the clip where I showed you my machine. And what I was planning to do is to make these little pouches that I've pre-cut back in Istanbul and for when I've looked at them turns out I would need um, because of the zippers are quite dark I sometimes made them contrasting I would need some black thread so yeah I went to the local sewing shop well not sewing shop basically it's for all kinds of crafts and I wanted to buy just the thread, which I did. Thank God, sometimes you go for this one thing and you buy everything but this. No, I did buy it, but I also got some yarn. First of all, my husband needs some new socks, and I figured, because the ones that I've done, he's been wearing a lot. So I found this superwash wool, eight ply, because this is my thing to go for when I'm making socks, and I really like this speckles on this one yeah if you're curious it's four seasons pure wool naturals eight ply and I just loved the feel of this cutie it's Peyton's baby dreamtime merino four ply it's just so delicious so as you can see it's 50 gram 169 meters grown and made in Australia yeah, because of course, that since I'm in this part of the world, I want to try all the local things. And, you know, I like colors. Of course, I had to go for all kinds of different colors. So the idea was to, I don't want to knit so thin, although I might. But I was thinking to combine these threads like gray and blue or gray and pink at some point, blue and pink. And um, I'm thinking this should be enough. For a cardi or a baby sweater or something for the baby and because it's a hundred percent merino hundred percent Australian fine merino wool I think the baby will love this oh I love I would love working on it for, for sure and oh they had discounts on fabrics and of course since I have the sewing machine I thought well I'm gonna sew right so I need some fabric yeah <laughs> well i don't know if you do it as well but i just see fabric and i fall in love with it look how cute is that especially this one it reminds me so much of my mom for some reason i don't know well maybe because this is <laughs> maybe mommy with a baby and i just had to buy and i didn't know how much so i bought a meter and we figured with the lady who was helping me to cut it that it would be enough for I like a bed sheet or something like that and something easy to make another thing that I absolutely love is this sloths aren't they the most cute things ever and this is fleece or as far as I understand the terminology of the fabrics but what I couldn't understand, and maybe some of you who sew things could explain for me, why does it say it's not intended for children's sleepwear? Because the feel of it, and that's what I was going to make it for. I was going to make it like, a, I don't know, like a blanket, or maybe a fitted sheet, or something, but for the baby to sleep in a cot. Like, I'm not an amazing sewer to make things for the baby to wear and I needed something just you know simple and I thought that's amazing for um, the, the sheet for the crib or um, maybe like a blanket or I don't know 
If you have any ideas, please, please do comment and tell me what to do with it. Why does it say it's not intended? And then another thing that the shop assistant told me is that they have special sprays for that because it's apparently flammable. Never heard of this thing before. And then I, I was looking at some patterns in the sewing section and I've seen this bunnies and I I've been looking for this kind of fabric before but I didn't know the name so apparently it's called fleece again I'm sorry if if I'm wrong but this is the kind of thing that they use for baby toys and it just feels so nice because of the texture and well this is one of my favorite colors and I thought that a bunny with this and maybe some bright um, colorful clothes or just actually I'm thinking of just making bunnies or bears plain without much clothes on them just you know for the kid to enjoy the texture of the fabric and just you know be able to pull on those legs and ears maybe if I do the bunny I would do the ear the inside of the ear of different fabric and maybe the the soles of the feet and like the paws besides I would make them like some colorful thing but that's my plan so far for sewing and let's move on to some thing that I wanted to show you because uh, last time I went to the library I stumbled upon this amazing book called knitting around the world and I just had to have it and I had to show you because I think it's fascinating to know that knitting has is a tradition which is so 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 ancient actually it has been done for long before there is record of it I think and of course we know that initially it might have been men doing the knitting, you know, the fishermen or the others. But what's most important, what's most interesting for me in this book is that, first of, by the way, it's um, by Lila Nargi. And uh, yeah, it's in our uh, Oakland library uh, here in Glenfield in the area. What I loved, of course, I went to see if there is anything about Russia and there's many different parts of the world represented here. And she gives notes to um, the parts, the, the books that she's been getting information from. But anyways, I was curious about the Russia, Russian part. And let me find it for you. So, turns out that... The area where I'm originally from, the south of Ural Mountains, there is a city called Orenburg, and um, it's famous all around the world. Well, I knew that those things are famous, but I had no idea that somebody would actually put that in a book. So anyways, she talks about uh, some evidence of uh, travelers back in... I don't know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, who have traveled and the, the um, things that I found there. Here are some mittens that I mentioned. And this is a shawl that is typical for that area, Orenburg shawl. Focus. I actually even texted my mom. I said, please, if you have that shawl, can you take a picture of it? Because in every house that I know of from where I'm from, everybody has that kind of shawl which is called pautinka it means like a spider web lace and look at this this is the one in this book and it's quite a big piece and it takes a lot of time to make but what i remember when we were little we would go somewhere on a train and they would always be these ladies with huge bag full of those shawls and they would sell them for very very cheap compared to the amount of work that was put into it. And why it's famous is because the lace, the, the yarn that they use is made from a special breed of sheep, um, particular to this area. And um, 
the author of this book says that they tried to import those sheep, but because of the weather conditions, which is much colder in the Ural Mountains, those sheep, they um, lost this fine um, down. Sorry, it's not sheep. I'm very sorry. It's goats. So these goats in the cold mountains of Ural Mountains, they have a very, very, very fine uh, fleece, which is used in this Pautinka shawls and I've seen lots of women like this and I've been like that as a child as well wearing those shawls on your head and it's very good because it's thin and it keeps you warm without making you sweat So I thought that was pretty curious and I wanted to share it with you because it's part of my culture and um, I wish that I had been there at the time when it was still going on but I grew up in a city not in a village and I didn't have anybody around me who could have taught me that the lace the intricacy of those designs and everything so funny enough Almost the next country that they talk about, well, first it's Balkans and then there's Turkey. And as some of you know that I've lived in Turkey for seven years in Istanbul, and I've seen lots of socks like that sold in different bazaars or markets at the weekend markets. And they're made by this Turkish women who just sit at home and they do all this intricate color work. And it is like that. like. I think what Turkish designs are famous for is that they use many, many, many colors all together and it's not very, um, it's not common to see like a one colored thing, garment, but in like different um, stitch pattern, mostly they are just using different colors throughout the whole thing. And um, they make this really interesting, um, socks which have an afterthought heel which looks like a flap it, I don't have a good picture here but if you google it it's very interesting I don't think they're very comfy on the foot but they're definitely something <laughs> to see if you're curious about different sock structures so yeah I wanted to share that book with you and I'm planning to maybe tell you next time a bit more about different other countries, but I'm definitely planning to read more from it. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is one of your questions. Thank you so much for posing this question because I never really wondered this myself and I really enjoyed researching for it. So one of you, my lovely viewers, asked me to find out how the possum uh, fur, possum yeah, fleece is collected. I've seen it and I'm actually knitting my shawl from partly possum yarn, but what I found out <laughs> was very interesting and it kind of put me off of knitting with it for a while. I'll tell you why. First of all, I interviewed this lovely lady Cher from New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn Shop that I go to. And she told me that, first of all, possums, although they may seem cute and they are protected maybe in other parts of the world, but in New Zealand, they're pests. They are a disaster. They are destroying, and I'm gonna quote now from a website, an official website, they're destroying about 21,000 tons of leaves and flowers in one night. Can you imagine? And New Zealand is not that big of a country. And this is how much of wildlife is being destroyed by these animals. So because they're pests, um, they actually trying to kill as many of them as they can. And for what they can do afterwards, they use their pelt and they use the, the, um, the, the fur but the way it is collected, I actually thought that I would tell you all of it, but except for the fact that 
they've been introduced in the 19th century to New Zealand and they have no predators and they multiplied and multiplied and multiplied so like by the 1980s they there were the population of them were like about 50 to 70 million species I mean animals now it's gone down but mm, I'm saying this because of course animals using their first of all you know how sheep are shared and it's okay I think it's fine to use that uh, like you cut your hair you're still alive and the same with animals but with possums they pluck it from the animals after they kill them and also what I've heard from the interview that I had is that it's they can only use the females because the males smell bad and I don't know if that's true but apparently they do it from the bodies when they're still warm so all these gory details I didn't want to go into but the fact is that the possum fur is very warm very short and it's very nice to have it like a 10 or 30 percent in in the yarn composition but to spin from it I would never want to touch like this so yeah thank you for this question I hope I answered it to the best of my ability and if you have any more questions about these things that are here local I would love to help you I would love to research it for you the very last thing that I had to do is announce the winner for the giveaway that me and Anna had been doing the self diet cow and I've chosen um, one random um, winner from the self diet cow group the finished objects and the winner is Jamie Wellcut. I will um, contact you through Ravelry and uh, your prize is one uh, pattern of your own choice anywhere on Ravelry so congratulations and um, so happy to have been a part of this amazing project and I'm looking forward to more giveaways that's all guys thank you so much it was very nice to hear from you to read your comments to get love from you if you decide to give me thumbs up or subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode bye thanks for joining me